Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to see you in the virtual world. During this presentation, I will describe the cognitive learning theory and some cognitive ergonomics principles. I hope these principles will help you to make your e-learning modules more efficient. The first thing to remember is that our brain doesn't retain a lot of information. The Ebbinghaus forgetting curve shows that we forget 50% in one hour unless we practice. Our retention rate is therefore quite low and I will describe a few ways we can improve it. The primary method to improve retention is to practice. This can be done in various ways. The first way is repetition based on active recall, which can be set up through exercise simulations and taking notes, for example. You can also work on psychological and physiological factors like sleep and stress. Another way is to enhance learners' engagement through social interaction. Working on intrinsic motivators like mastery, autonomy and purpose of learning are also very good ways to improve learners' engagement. Finally, you can help the learner in creating better memory representations. Cognitive ergonomics is definitely the best asset we have in improving memory representations in the learner's brain. Now, let's take a look at the cognitive theory. It describes how people learn from multimedia content, including videos, presentations and e-learning modules. First of all, it's important to consider the learner's brain as a cognitive processing system. An e-learning module may contain words and pictures. During the first step, spoken words and sounds enter the learner's brain through his ears, while graphics and printed words enter the learner's brain through his eyes. If the learner is engaged and paying attention, he will select and stock some of the relevant images and sounds in his short-term memory. Just some images and sounds are selected because the short-term memory is just able to manipulate a few pieces of information for a short time. During the second step, the learner mentally organizes the selected images in a pictorial model and the selected sounds in a verbal model in his working memory. Finally, the learner integrates the incoming verbal and pictorial representations with the existing knowledge in his long-term memory. To summarize, there are three important cognitive processes. Firstly, select relevant words and images. Secondly, mentally organize words and images. Thirdly, integrate the incoming knowledge with the existing knowledge. It is possible to identify four principles in the cognitive model. The first principle is dual channel. We have separate channels for processing visual pictorial material and auditory verbal material. Learning is therefore facilitated when we apply both of these channels. For example, people learn better when we use spoken words instead of printed words to support images and graphics. This principle is called the modality principle. The second principle is that the working memory has a limited capacity people can actively process only a few pieces of information in each channel at one time. In fact, 
our working memory is only able to manipulate seven plus minor two items in each channel for approximately 20 seconds. The working memory capacity is really low and obviously easy to overload. For example, if you try to multiply 569 by 84 in your head, you won't be able to carry out another mental task at the same time because your working memory is overloaded by calculations. As a result, inappropriate contents or methods that overlap the working memory make learning much more difficult. Consequently, it is necessary to reduce the cognitive load in order to facilitate learning. This can be done by eliminating certain sounds and images that do not support the instructional objectives. The coherence principle states that we learn better when we avoid extraneous words, sounds and graphics in multimedia lessons. Elaborate backgrounds, nice music or decorative pictures should be considered as extraneous materials. Furthermore, it's encouraged to use limited amount of text and images per screen. I personally suggest that you use only keywords and ideas instead of full sentences. Keep in mind that nine keywords or ideas is the maximum amount of information you should present on one screen at one time. The third principle is that learning should be considered as an active processing. Learning occurs when people engage in appropriate cognitive processing during the course, such as paying attention to relevant material, organizing the material into coherent structure, and integrating it with what we already know. Engaging learners and getting their attention are the best options to trigger this active processing. The personalization principle states that learning is better when we use a conversational style and a visible author in learning modules. The fourth principle is that new knowledge and skills must be well integrated and retrieved from long-term memory during performance. Practice exercise and simulations based on job context are the best methods to integrate new knowledge and skills with the existing knowledge. The job context is extremely important because it will include retrieval hooks in the long-term memory. These retrieval hooks help learners to easily retrieve skills and knowledge when needed on the job. Thanks a lot for attending this presentation. I hope we will keep in touch in this virtual learning world. Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to see you in the virtual world.